Hi and welcome to another video on Roas military swordsmanship, which is mostly sabre and a few other weapons of the time like your basket hilts and spadrons. And this lesson is about the grip or how you hold the sword. Uh, those familiar with later systems of uh, military sabre, um, such as uh, Hutton, will be familiar with quite a strict system of um, holding the back strap of the sword. And that is where you place the thumbs up, the thumbs up grip like this. Um, that's used at the time of Roeth, but it's not universal. So we're going to look at uh, the different grips and why they're used and how. Uh, the first thing is, he talks about small sword and spadroon players, uh, players as in fences. Um, this is the spadroon, the, the standard 1796 spadroon at the time, one of the standard infantry swords. I've showed this on videos before. Um, and he says that spadroon players tend to like to use their swords like a small sword would. Um, a small sword uh, is this. It's a gentleman's sword for civilian wear. So it would have no real cutting edges and would be close to half the weight of the spadroon and is mostly just designed for the point. It's a, um, the direct uh, sort of um, lineage from rapier to small sword. The, this is the, the, the weapon. So you're looking at something like 400 grams. And this is what the epee uh, represents in small sword. Um, and with the small sword, it's very common to grip it like this, whereby you don't use the rings like you might in a rapier, if they have them even, most do, and you rest the thumb here. Uh, and this grip is really good for um, point work with a very light weapon. And it's quite similar to the way that um, epées are wielded today when you have a, when you don't use a pistol grip at least, with the thumb rested on top. Um, and with spadroon, most say that the reason spadroon was developed is so that men who practiced with the small sword for fencing for sport could use this sword in a similar fashion and just utilize a few saber techniques with it effectively or basket hilt techniques. So it frequently would be with the thumb on the back here or onto the back heel as if it had a back strap like this. Um, now this grip, you'll see it very commonly later on in the 19th century being used universally with sabers. And if you look at say a saber like this, which is um, a, a rifle company officer's sword, 1827 pattern. Now this sword is relatively light compared to the sort of um, flank officer swords of Roth's time and actually works quite well with the thumb on the back strap. You get good edge alignment and it allows for quite a snap in your cuts. So you see here, if I do it left-handed, thumb points up towards the grip, uh, up towards the blade, and it allows for quite a change in angle, you see that the middle guard, for example, it tends to point out a little bit more, a bit like rapier. Um, but Roeth says that that is well suited to the spadroon and to lighter swords. And he says that uh, with heavier blades, um, which he's talking about um, basket hilts, uh, a variety of sabres, and in particular this kind of sword, a flank officer's sword, um, or 1803 infantry officer's sword, and a, a variety of other very heavily curved cutting blades like this that were used on foot. He says a few things. One, you often can't get the room to put the thumb on the back strap of some of them, and that's certainly the case with basket hilts. But he also says that with a fairly heavy blade or quite a curve, they can become unwieldy if you put the thumb onto the back strap. So far from being a strict rule, the thumb on the back strap, you need to experiment with yourself depending on which sword you're using. You need to see if it's comfortable for you, can you use the sword like in that manner, in terms of can you fit your hand in, and is it comfortable? So sometimes, yes, it's beneficial to get the thumb on the back strap. In this particular case, this 1803 flank officer sword isn't at all suited to that grip, uh, and the grip shape is completely different altogether, in which case we would use a classic, what will be called hammer grip, which is typical of, well, medieval swords, and it's just a, the common grip that anyone would take when picking up a sword of any kind. So. Um, that's it. If you want to use hammer grip, feel free. If you've got a sword where you can get the thumb on the back strap and it's comfortable and good and nice for you, then do that. So you can use one or other. So uh, that's all I'm going to give you on the grip of the saber. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe to get later content.